Okay, uh, this video is a different direction. It will be about linear equations and not differential equations. A matrix uh, is the, at the center of this video and it's called the incidence matrix. And that incidence matrix tells me everything about a graph. Now what do I mean by the word graph? I don't mean a graph of sine x or cosine x. The word graph is used in another way completely for some edges and some nodes. So I have some nodes, in this case one, two, three, four nodes. Now, that's my number n. The number m is the number of edges that connect the nodes. So I have edge one connecting those nodes, edge two, edge three, four, and five. And I didn't have, an, didn't put in an edge six. A complete graph would have all possible edges, but a general graph can have some edges, some, some pairs of nodes are connected, others are not connected. Okay, so now I want to create the matrix that shows me everything that's in that picture. Then I can work with the matrix in and, and graphs and, and their matrices are the number one application, number one model for uh, so many applications like the World Wide Web. The web might have every, every website would be a node and there would be an edge between two nodes if those websites are linked. So the World Wide Web is a giant graph or the telephone company is operating a, a, has, has a giant graph in which the nodes are the telephones and there's an edge when a call is made from one phone to another between two phones. So nodes and edges and our brain which is the great problem of the 21st century is to understand the graph that's represented by, that represents our brain the connections of neurons in our thinking. Well, that's a tougher problem than we'll solve today. Let me work with that graph and create the matrix. Okay, so the matrix has five rows coming from the five edges. Let me take the first edge. So the first edge, there's edge number one, goes from node one to node two. The nodes correspond to columns. So if I want an edge from node one to node two, that edge one will go in row one. Edge one, so edge one, edge, first edge goes, is connected to row one. And so that edge goes from node one to node two. So I put a minus one and a one and it doesn't touch nodes three and four. That's edge one. That's row one. Going, it, now that tells me everything I see about row, about edge one. Edge two goes from one to three. So I'll put a minus one, a zero, and a one in row two, because row two comes, comes from edge two, and it goes from one to three. R edge three, will give me row three from two to three. So edge three giving me row three, two to three. Edge four went from one to four. So minus one, nothing, nothing, one. That tells me that edge four is going from node one to node four. And finally, from node two to node four is the final row. Okay, do you see there the, the graph? Everything, all the information uh, in this picture is now captured in that matrix. So we can work with the matrix. And what does a matrix do? It multiplies vectors. That's what a matrix does, it acts on vectors. So what happens if I, if I apply, uh, multiply that matrix by a vector? So now uh, let me take out these these edge numbers and do a multiplication. Okay, 
that matrix has four columns. It's a five by four matrix, M by N, five by four. So it multiplies a vector with four components, and those four components will represent, will come from the four nodes, and maybe they represent voltages at the nodes. Let me think like an electrical engineer for a moment. Okay, so if there's my matrix, I imagine I have voltages, V1, V2, V3, V4, at the nodes. So there's a V1 voltage here, V2, a V3, and a V4. And with those voltages, currents will flow. And so uh, my unknowns are the voltages, the four voltages, and the five currents. That's what the engineer needs to know. Okay, so first of all, when I multiply A times V, what do I get? Let me just do that multiplication. So that first row times that gives me V2 minus V1, right? the dot product of the row with the vector. The next one is V3 minus V1. Then I have a minus one there, that's a V3 minus a V2. Then I have a minus one and a one, I think that's V4 minus V1. And finally, this dot product with that will give me a V4 minus V2. So what am I seeing here? What is, this is now A times V. I've done a multiplication by a vector of voltages. And what have I found? I found the differences in voltages, the voltage difference between one end of the edge and the other one. I have five edges, and now I have five results, and those are the voltage differences, and what does a difference in voltage do, if, I have a, if these are at different voltages, different potentials, current flows. If they're at the same potential, no current flows, right? That's, that's the fundamental driving equation of currents from voltages, of is, is the difference in the voltage, the difference in the potential drives the flow, and now how much flow? Well, those, so now I, I'm looking for the flows, so I'll, can I call those W, say for the flows, so I have a W2 is the flow on that edge, a W1 is a flow there, a W5, a W3, and a W4. My, my pair of unknowns, and that's the beauty of this picture, is the voltages V1 to V4 at the nodes, and the currents, the currents, the flows, W1 to W5 on the five edges. So now, uh, and, and I've seen that AV gives me the voltage differences. I, I'm going to briefly, briefly l approach the fundamental laws of flow, of current flow of flow in any network. It's the, 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 we're talking about the most basic equation of, a, I would almost say of applied mathematics. Maybe I should say of discrete applied mathematics. By discrete I mean a graph not, without derivatives. I, I'm not seeing derivatives here, I'm just seeing matrices and vectors. Okay, so let me So I have to remember that incidence matrix, A. So uh, let me write down again, A, V gave the voltage differences and that's one part of my picture. Another part is, what is the equation that finally brings it together, that if I have the currents, so V's, the V's were the voltages. Now, there's going to be an equation involving W, the currents. And what is the equation, so this, 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 what I'm going to write here is going to be 
really important. It's going to be Kirchhoff's current law. K C L. And I just emphasize that there are two H's in Kirchhoff's name. So Kirchhoff's current law says, and this is you pay attention, it says that the total flow in to a, to a node equals the flow out. We're talking about equilibrium here. So if current is traveling around my graph, my network, and it's traveling, it's a stable equilibrium here, so that flow into node 1 equals flow out of node 1. And let me tell you what, what that equation is in terms of the matrix A. This voltage difference is involved A, and beautifully, the the Kirchhoff's current law involves A transpose. So A transpose now is 4 by 5. These are the flows, five, a vector with five components, because I have five edges, and Kirchhoff's current law would say that's zero. So between A and A transpose, the incidence matrix is leading me to the fundamental uh, equilibrium conditions for flow in a network. Now, one more law is needed. It has to connect voltage differences to flows, potentials to currents. Do you know that who's, who created that law for uh, for electrical in, in, in electrical engineering, it was Ohm. So Ohm's law, finally, Ohm's law is edge by edge that the potential difference, the drop in potential, the, 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 the potential forcing current is proportional to the current. So, so this is potential, so voltage difference, let me, let me write it in words, voltage difference, voltage drop, I could say, between the, two, between the ends, or across, across a resistor, is proportional to and, and there's some resistance, some number, some physical number comes in here. This is where the material of the, the, we're working with comes in. In Kirchhoff's laws, those laws hold for a network before we even say what the network is made of. But now if our network is, is made of resistors or pipes or whatever we have, then this will be some conductance uh, well, so E equal IR is some resistance times the flow, times the current flow. W. Okay, so a difference in Vs is some number, this is the physical constant that we have to measure in a lab uh, to know what our resistor, what, how many uh, ohms our resistor uh, is. That equation is on each edge. So we have a bunch of equations, and together they tell us the four voltages and the five currents. And uh, I just, maybe I just make the main point here. The main point is that this matrix is crucial. A is crucial, A transpose is crucial. A gives voltage differences that make something happen. A transpose is the balance law, the balance, the current balance at, at each node. And 
you won't be surprised that when the whole thing is put together and we have a final equation to solve, we, we, end, up with an, we end up with A transpose and A. And that magic combination A transpose A is central to uh, graph theory. It's called the graph Laplacian and has a name and, and, and a fame of its own. Thank you. <laughs>